Here's my new workman antenna. Just just arrived today. The mailman actually brought it. It arrived in a inside of this plastic case, a lot like Diamond Antenna sends their cases. It's got a little brag sheet here. Of, it talks about things about power capacity and low bleed over and blah blah blah. And uh, of course, the antenna itself arrived. A small package of hardware, and then I've got the manual for it. However, the manual didn't come with the with the uh, antenna. I had to download it. I don't know what that's all about. It sounds like a quality control moment to me. But anyway, I did get the manual. And so I'm set up and ready to go on that. Construction is, uh, you know, it's pretty solid for a little uh, a little cheap antenna. It's, I got it for, I don't know, $32 off of Amazon or something. It's held together by some rivets. There's no screws on it. This is pretty industrial. The base is nice. I don't know how long the finish is going to last. And the plastic is pretty nice. And they also gave you a nice cap on the end that's glued on so it doesn't... Yeah, it's glued on there nice and nice and tight so it doesn't come loose. So that's that's pretty impressive. Now the question is, will it work when I put it up? Here's the mount once it's put together. It's got this little guy right here, a U-clamp, and a couple of bolts and um, lock washers that go on the back. The the uh, uh, U-bolts were actually a little wider than the holes, so I had to apply a pair of water pumps to them to squeeze them to get in there which wasn't much of a big deal but uh, that's pretty much what it looks like when you get it ready to go on your uh, tower or your boat or whatever it's going to go whatever it's going to go on to okay let's look at this antenna just a little further there's a certain amount of controversy about it because this antenna picks up the ground its ground plane via the link of the coax and apparently the coax has to be uh, certain lengths um, to make this thing balance out and become resonant. So let's just see what's in here. This is without a doubt a quarter wave whip that's that's actually wound up inside of the uh, the black plastic uh, to make up for the uh, the length. So obviously it's not I think 27 megs is either 100 or 207 inches and it's obviously not that so they've wound the wire in there. So let's just see what's hooked onto what here. Here's my meter. There's the outer conductor there's the interconductor, so they are obviously are not together, and not not the interconductor does not touch the uh, the grounded base at all. So and, and the outer conductor on the SO two hundred nine does does the same thing up there. So this thing obviously has zero ground plane on it. You've got to develop it with a either build a ground plane on it or do the uh, coaxial cable trick, which is what I'm going to try to do. Concerning top-loaded antennas, there are basically three different types of top-loaded fiberglass antennas. There's the single wrap, which would be like the fire stick. Then there is a double wrap antenna, such as the Tiger, S-O-T-T. Then there is a quad wrap. Procom makes an excellent quad wrap antenna. Here's one thing I found in this antenna I'm not really crazy about. There's really no way to totally seal up this connector because as you can see here there's a space going up into the innards of the, of the uh, antenna and so I'm just going to wrap that as best I can with uh, some rubber tape and some uh, 33 type scotch tape and uh, see what I can do with it. I'm using 3M Timflex 2155 rubber tape to seal the connector up to put the inner, inner sealing layer on it. It's the same tape that the telcos used to use uh, on their uh, drop wire mid-span uh, splices and its claim to fame is it works very well and when you take it off it doesn't uh, leave a bunch of residue on the connector and you can reuse the connector. When you apply this type of tape you stretch it on really tight it, it forces the tape to adhere to itself and it seals into a solid mass and uh, it pre prevents any leakage. Next I'm going to apply some 3M Super 33 vinyl tape over the rubber tape that protects it from 
damage from ultraviolet rays and uh, generally from weather. Once again, you stretch this tape on uh, to get a nice firm grip on it. And when you finally get to the end of it, don't pull it and tear it. Leave it a little slack, cut it with a pair of scissors, and then you just apply it on with your fingers. If you t tear it, the tension you put in the tape will make the tape suck back and it'll start unpeeling. You'll, un you'll end up with an antenna with a black flag flying off the bottom of it. And so there you have one waterproofed connector. Here's my CB radio setup. <clears throat> it's a Uniden Bearcat 980 SSB single sideband, which is Uniden's new uh, entry into the CB radio world. It's a nice radio. I like it a lot. It scans and does a lot of stuff. Onto that, on the output of the radio, I've got a little digital spur meter. And on the other end of that is the Workman B100 antenna. The coaxial cable length is 110 feet. The tech support folks from Workman indicate you have to have at least 50 feet of wire on this thing, of coax on this thing, to make it work right. I end up with 110 because that's how far it is from here to my antenna. So let's check the SWIR. I'm, I'm on channel 1, 26.965 megahertz. I'm going to key up. SWIR is about one dot. 25 to 1. That's very good. Now for midband. Midband channel 20, 27.205 megahertz. 1.24 to 1. Well, 1.28 to 1. Still very good. Okay, and then finally, channel 40. And we have 1. I don't know, 1.31 to, uh, to 1. The antenna is obviously in, in resonance throughout the entire CB band and should uh, present no problem to operating on, uh, on that band. One thing that surprised me about the Workman B100 antenna is that not only is it resonant on 11 meters, it's also resonant on 10 meters across the full band. And it was, it was actually resonant on 11 meters across the full band as well. And I'm just going to run a little demo here to show the fact that that's uh, actually true. And so what I've got here, I've got my ICOM IC7200, which is a amateur radio HF transceiver, and a Dawa Swir and Power Meter. I don't know what model is, a 101 or something. And so the radio is hooked on to the power meter, hooked on to the Workman B100 antenna. And so I'm going to run some power to this thing, which will measure Swir. So first of all, to demonstrate what bad Swir looks like, I'm going to put 21 megs through there, which is a full uh, what, 7 megs off, off the uh, expected band, or maybe 6 megs. And that should give me a bad swear, and we should see that there. This radio is now set up for 5 watts. I'm going to key it up, and we'll see what happens. Okay, there's my bad swear. It's about oh, 3.0 to 1 or something like that. Totally unusable, but you would expect that, being I'm so far out of band with the frequency. So now I'm going to put the radio up to the bottom end of the 10 meter band which is, let's see, oh, there we go, 22800000, 28 megs, right on the money. And I'm going to key that up, and we get 5 watts, but there is no in, in bad swir indicated. The swir is, is low, 1 to 1 or so. Okay, I'm going to move up the frequency for 28.5, 500 kilohertz up from the bottom end of the band. That would be 28500000, enter. Key it up again. No swear to speak of. Looking good. Okay, I'm going to put it on 29 megs, a full meg up from the bottom end of the 10 meter band. And so we go 2900000, zero, 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 enter. 29 megs. A little bit of swear showing up, but it's really low. It's like 1.2 to 1 or something like that. Perfectly highly usable amount of. Uh, uh, swerve uh, ratio. So now I'm going to go to the top of the band, the very top of the 10 meter band, which is around 29.7. So I'll go 29, um, oh, 6.9500, zero, zero, just 5 uh, kilohertz off the top. And I'll key that up. And now we're going to start to get a little bit of swerve, but it's only about maybe 1.4 to 1, which is still entirely acceptable, which says the workman. Uh, B100 antenna 
with 110 feet of coax on it is resonant all the way across from the bottom of the CB band to the top of the amateur radio 10 meter band. Okay, here's the antenna mounted on the outside of the house. And it's just on a couple of pieces of EMT. It's about 17 feet high. And there it is right there. And so you can see it's mounted on a metal pipe. Comes straight down. And then the coax comes straight down. The coax is RG8X, by the way. And then goes straight under the house where it winds its way to where my um, ham station is at. Out of general curiosity, I put my uh, Workman B100 antenna on my amateur radio JT65 setup. And JT65 is a system the hams use, it's a digital system where they can do contacts back and forth. And this is the log for those contacts. This is the received log at, uh, at my station in California. And I'm seeing more East Coast stations for this time in the morning, about 7.30 local, than I normally do. So I'm thinking the, the B100 antenna is doing a fairly good job uh, certainly a better job than my wire antenna does outside. And here's some of the stations that I saw. Here's a WP2B, which is a station in Virginia. Uh, a KC3CFV, and that is a station in Pennsylvania. Um, let's see, an N3GTY, uh, <clears throat> and that is a station in North Carolina. Then we have this little surprise right here, the CD3GID with a received signal of about minus 20 dB, which is pretty good, very copyable. And that station is in South America in Chile, and he was busy talking to an E2 station, which is, is a Spanish station. And finally, I saw a uh, Kilo 2GLW station which is in um, New York. Oh, one here, this one is in, this PP5XA is out in Trinidad or San Martin or one of those islands out in, I guess, the Caribbean or somewhere. And it came in with a minus 17. So this, this antenna, the B100, is hearing pretty good. Here's a contact I made uh, at about 941 uh, California time uh, on 10 meters on the JT9 system, and I was using 7 watts on the Workman B100 antenna. I saw W8DM, who's a station out of Mississippi, uh, calling CQ, and I responded to him over here, and he got my call, and he responded to me here, telling me that he received my signal at a minus 4 uh, dB. At that point, I responded back to him, saying that I had also received his at minus 4 dB. These are determined by the computer, not by me uh, picking a number, by the way. And then he recorded, he responded with a Roger, and I responded with a Roger 73, and the contact was done. Uh, the band was just barely opening, and uh, the, the contact was obviously solid at minus 4 dB, saying that the Workman B100 antenna can hear as well as it can talk. The Workman B100 antenna will work equally well on CB radio or amateur radio 11 meters and 10 meters. It's well constructed, it's easy to put up, it has low air resistance and it should work just fine as long as you get a minimum of 50 feet or even better yet 100 feet of coaxial cable on it. Uh, it talks as good as it hears, and it's uh, a good selection as an antenna.